Poštovani gledalci, dobar dan i dobrodošli u novo izdanje emisije Raspravda. Emisija je nastala u saradnji portala Pravda i kanala Helmcast. Današnji gost je poseban gost. Iz inostranstva je prvi put u ovoj emisiji da gostimo nekog iz inostranstva, a nekako je na neki način i domaći. Današnji gost je geopolitičar, geopolitički filozof iz Moskve, Leonid Savin. Gospodine Savin, dobri dan. Dobar požal, dobar požal. Пожаление. Как, как вы сказали? Добро пожаловать. Добро пожаловать вас в Сербии. Благодарю и рад опять mm. находиться в этой студии. Mm. Спасибо. Uh, господин Самин, uh, че бити, наверное, гост на нашем интервью, и мы радичем интервью на почетчем на русском языке, на жалость, потому что я не знаю довольно русский, касничем наставить на английском, а вы чете мочи да прочитате, что причем у превод. Uh, это не первый раз, первый раз, как, как вы в Беграде, так вы не первый раз в этом студии, так? Да, были, и да, в этом году я уже третий раз приезжаю да. в Белград. И... Когда первый раз вы были в Белград? В 2004 году. Это 2014 год тому назад, да. так? И, и когда вы... какая Сербия была тогда, а какая сейчас? А, ну, тогда еще ощущались последствия Югославской войны, точнее, попытки оккупации НАТО. А, тогда еще были видны вот эти раны. А сейчас нет? А, сейчас это не так видно. Люди более, как сказать смотрят в Европу, ну, по моему мнению, многие, молодежь, по крайней мере, уже выросло поколение, которое не знало э, этой войны, не знало этих последствий, какую э, тяжелую цену заплатила Югославия и непосредственно Сербия за агрессию НАТО в 99-м году. Вы думаете, что сегодня знают люди? Как? Но есть еще поколение, конечно, которое mm. все испытало на себе, а растет новая молодежь, так же, как и в России, например. Есть новое поколение, которое не, не знало и не слышало о проблеме в Чечне. Потому что у нас тоже был военный конфликт, довольно серьезный. И после 2000-х годов, когда пришел к власти Владимир Путин, эту проблему удалось решить. Тем не менее, мы тоже испытали ужасы войны на Кавказе, в России. Если нет проблем, можно ли продолжить это интервью на английский язык, Давай. потому что мой русский очень нехороший. Извините, пожалуйста. Давай. Uh, you heard about the statement of John Bolton. John Bolton is the yes. advisor of the, of the American President Donald Trump. Uh, yesterday he told, when, while he was in Ukraine, that America will not be involved in negotiations between Serbia and Kosovo anymore. Uh, do you trust him? Do you believe that that's true? At first, John Bolton is a very strange figure, and uh, because he, when he was representative of the United States in the United Nations, he, he told uh, that uh, maybe America will go out of this organization, something like that. Uh, second, he is uh, strongly anti-Muslim, and he was director of Gatestone Institute that provides anti-Muslim propaganda. It's, uh, Yes, there is some problems in Europe because of Muslim migrants, I agree. Uh, but uh, there is in some ways uh, mostly pro-Sionist propaganda, the same way, pro-Sionist and anti-Muslim. So it's, uh, we see that some kind of interest uh, going through his institute. And uh, of course, Bolden is also anti-Russian. Uh, he may be good for Trump because Trump uh, Uh, possession of idea America first and uh, John Bolton is uh, some kind of uh, uh, politicians that would like to be America more strong and to use power and to not to look on uh, what says other countries and uh, just uh, everything for United States yeah. uh, so but uh, maybe it's good that uh, now Bolton and uh, maybe Trump follow him, that uh, United States will be not uh, some kind of uh, a mediator uh, about uh, Kosovo problem in Serbia. Because uh, before uh, America brings uh, many problems uh, to Serbian politicians, to Serbian people, so now maybe it will be good uh, that uh, decision will be done by Serbian uh, government or Serbian decision makers and politics. For Kosovo problem. Well, not government, people better. Yeah, people, <laughs> people better than government, <laughs> if you ask me. Government is uh, not so. Uh, yes, but maybe the go government will be changed you know, in, uh, after some uh, months or some years. Mm. It's, it depends on uh, people's will. Mm -hmm. 
at least. In Russia, yes. In Serbia, not so much, but we'll talk about that. But uh, when you say that Bolton is anti-Russian, what do you mean? Because people here don't actually know how anti-Russian he is, and he is very anti-Russian. No, if if we analyze uh, his speeches for last years and the last 10 or 15 years, uh, we will see that uh, he always was anti-Russian. Uh, anti, uh, uh, I don't know why, uh, for mm. example, historically, politically, maybe he will see Russia like emergent power and uh, mm. some kind of treat for United States. So he would like to preserve influence uh, on global level of America. Mm. And uh, so it's the reason uh, mm. Russia must be punished and uh, he would like to push on uh, Russian politicians. That's what he said, right? He would like to punish Russia. Yes, right? yes. Before, mm. before he told about it, about Syria, for example, mm. about Iran, about North Korea. Uh, they are our allies, and Iran, Syria, and North Korea. And he told that we must to bomb North mm-hmm. Korea. We must to bomb Iran. We must to bomb Syria. <laughs> so, uh, do you think that it's possible that uh, he is trying to, let's say, uh, take away Serbia from Russia and? ally Serbia with America. Do you think that that is his goal? It's a complicated question because uh, if we will see uh, on uh, other Balkan countries, for example, Montenegro, Macedonia, uh, we will see that uh, government, they are now it's more pro-Western. There was some kind of uh, uh, color revolution in Macedonia and uh, Zayev is pro-Soros agent mm-hmm. a pro-american agent and uh, in uh, montenegro situation different but also the same some claims mm-hmm. some rumors that russia tried to organize coup and mm-hmm. now it's member of uh, north atlantic treaty organization mm-hmm. itself so uh, there is some voices in russia that uh, the west interested to do the same with serbia mm-hmm. after good experience in Montenegro and uh, what happens now in Macedonia. So, but uh, for my opinion, uh, Serbian people uh, not uh, will go to, for West and will be uh, with Russia. People, yes, but what about the government? Government is, you know, not so in line with the people's will. And it's a tradition yes, here, yes. unfortunately, for pro- decades that pro- governments yes, don't and, follow people. And will. we see that, uh, for example, Vucic not follow his promises. And, uh, for example, about uh, base in Nish, uh, about mm. the center of humanitarian cooperation of Russian Serbian. There is mm. uh, very clear in, uh, information in the constitution of this organization that uh, mm-hmm. what to do, but uh, still many steps not uh, done. And uh, which promised to organize it uh, in another more practical way, mm-hmm. for example, to give a diplomatic status uh, for Russian personnel there. But not, till now, it's not done. Mm-hmm. So uh, yes, uh, we see that uh, government of Serbia and uh, some high politicians just try to sit on t- uh, two chairs mm-hmm. in one moment, but it's not possible. Uh, look on Ukraine, what happened there? There's, uh, some generation of presidents also tried to sit on two chairs, look on West, and at the same time to get some benefit from Russia and uh, mm. gas for cheap prices, some uh, kind of business. And then situation changed, and uh, Yanukovych now refugee in Russia, and uh, no any cheap prices for gas, and uh, a very bad relation, official relations, not between people, but with some uh, representative of. Uh, uh, political AI, nationalist political ideology in Ukraine, and they are mostly pro-Western and totally anti-Russian. Well, since you mentioned the Ukraine, you were born there, right? Yes. Where exactly in, uh, in Ukraine? Uh, Sumy city is close to Russian border. Yeah. Uh, that was part of Ukraine when you were born, right? Uh, and no. it is part of Ukraine still? Yes. Right. And, Unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, since you mentioned Ukraine, Ukraine Many here were surprised that, how to say, Russia allowed uh, for something like Kiev Maidan to happen in Ukraine. Uh, many here believe that uh, Russia will never allow that to happen practically on, on Russia's borders, you know, and uh, in a nation that is like uh, the closest one to the Russians, you know, and uh, it still happened. Do you think that it was uh, 
a blunder or a oversight or, 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 or like a mistake on Russia's part to allow that? Or was it beyond Russia's intervention? Was it beyond Russia's help? What there was no Russian diplomacy in general for the last 20 years. Just some representative and doing the joint business with Ukrainians, uh, some kind of uh, corruption politicians. Going. Uh, about 15 years ago, I've talked to some Russian allies that uh, if uh, situation will be the same, uh, you will get a uh, serious problem with Ukraine because of ri rise of a uh, uh, new kind of Ukrainian nationalism, it's strongly anti-Russian. Mm -hmm. They, they do, do it very logically, do it uh, very rational, in a rational way. They get some funds from Western Foundation, uh, get some assistance from USAID, from uh, uh, foreign embassies. At the same time, they cooperated with uh, liberals. Liberals and uh, right wing nationalism, it's a very dangerous cocktail. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that the situation in Maidan was some kind of alliance between liberals and mm -hmm. uh, Ukrainian nationalists. And the uh, Western totally support because of geopolitical ideas, geopolitical mm -hmm. point of view, just to uh, idea fix of uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski that Ukraine mu must be uh, cut it off Russia because Russia without Ukraine is not empire and something like that. Yeah. And uh, why did Russia allow all that? I mean, why, why, why did Russia didn't have diplomacy for, as you say, for the last 20 years? You know? what, what, what first, went wrong? There was uh, some liberals involvement in the decision-making process in Russia for some 20 years ago at least. And uh, still, and our foreign Ministry, there are many liberals working there. They have very specific point of view. Uh, what is Russian world? Uh, how this politics must be adopted, and so on. Uh, second mistake, for my opinion, is just uh, trust to the West itself, because at the time, uh, for example, 15 years ago, there was very close cooperation with the European Union, with Germany, also cooperation with the United States on Afghan problem and uh, in different areas. Uh, during the epoch of uh, uh, Bush Jr., we are satisfied uh, our business with the United States and some uh, Russian oligarchs to put our uh, money to Western banks and so on. So uh, from times of uh, Boris Yeltsin, there was a very influential group in Russia who were looking on West every time. And mm -hmm. he told that we must to follow Western politics. We must to do like the same mm -hmm. on the West, not to the East, not to the Near East, not to Africa, but just the West because the technical development, they have mm -hmm. very uh, experienced in politics and so on. So it's also a very serious mistake to trust the West. Uh, are they influential in Russia today? Uh, not like before, but uh, yes, still the same people involved in decision-making process. And who are those people? Maybe we know some of them, uh, even some, by name. Uh, for example, uh, from uh, financial economical bloc, from Ministry of Finance, for example, maybe uh, Kudrin, mm -hmm. for example, uh, Gref, who mm -hmm. is head of Sberbank. And what about the, 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 the uh, gov uh, governance of the, of the National Bank? Um, uh, Nebulina, ne, 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 yes, yes, Elvira Nebulina. Yeah. Is she part of that yes, circle? Yes, too? yes, yeah. yes, yes. They follow uh, liberal politics uh, mostly in the mm -hmm. same, say, say, in the same time. Uh, they, uh, yes, follow uh, some more pro patriotic, uh, mm -hmm. technically, some decision because, uh, of course, they need to control of uh, rubble, uh, control of economics. Uh, because if the economic collapse, there will be a very serious crisis, crisis mm -hmm. in, uh, in Russia. Uh, but uh, still some persons uh, working in uh, high positions. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, Anatoly Chubais. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's still working. He's yeah. still very influential. Yes, German Gref, he's head of mm -hmm. Sberbank. And, uh, and other persons from uh, high school of economics, mm -hmm. university, uh, very influential mm -hmm. in Russia. And uh, you know what, what is bothering us? I mean, uh, Vladimir Putin is in power for almost 20 years. And of course, during his era, Russia re-emerged as the global mm -hmm. power. But on the other hand, 
he is not he personally, but his uh, his government is tolerating that kind of people. How is it possible? Why why are they? Uh, how how is it that Russia is capable of helping Syria, and you know Donbas or Crimea, but isn't capable of uh, helping itself by getting rid of that cancerous uh, elements in in society? Well, yes, of course we must to understand uh, Putin's psychology, what he is doing, and he prefers to keep balance. So, One time he prefer uh, to give, give more. Uh, benefits to military bloc, to enforcement agencies and to conservative uh, elements of uh, his uh, surrounding. Another time he prefers to give more preference to liberals. So he just to keep balance between these groups and to control both. And so why is he doing that? Because uh, maybe it's his idea to, to keep this balance. Mm -hmm. He cannot to totally eliminate liberal bloc uh, because they are also influential. Mm -hmm. Some Russian oligarchs uh, involvement in this process and to control part of economics, and uh, he cannot to just to destroy this building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the question is, the question that we ask ourselves here in Serbia is, if you know uh, Russia doesn't even for any reason, doesn't even deal with its own liberals, how can we expect Russia to help us, Serbs, when we have to fight our liberals, you know? That's the question. So is that the answer to uh, why there is no stronger Russian presence in Serbian society? Uh, yes, I agree, because, uh, of course, there is influence of Russian liberals uh, through mm -hmm. official funds for example, Garchakov Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, such kind of structures who already works and Sberbank and uh, another, uh, some kind of business groups who mm -hmm. interested in Serbia. Uh, but I think at first uh, must to be established contact between uh, conservatives groups, maybe not formal, but uh, kind of movements uh, between Serbia and Russia. Mm -hmm. And we already established a branch in Serbia of our international Eurasian movement. So it's some kind of step of cooperation mm -hmm. between uh, our conservatives and groups in uh, Russia, because in Russia we kind of umbrella and doing some uh, many projects and scientific project, education, cultural project. Mm -hmm. and there may be a kind of bridge between Russia and uh, Serbia for this kind of activity. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, more uh, groups and more uh, collectives uh, will come to do the same cooperation mm -hmm. between Serbian and Russian people. Do you consider yourself a conservative or uh, how would yes, you describe yes, yourself? Uh, conservative. conservative, yeah. conservative. And what about Putin? How would you describe him? Uh, same, I already told that he is semi-conservative, semi-liberal. <laughs> <Something. laughs> Balance, right? Well, yeah, yes, yeah. Like Professor Dugan told, there is uh, two nature of Putin, uh, solar Putin and lunar Putin. Sometimes <laughs> he is solar and sometimes he is lunar. <laughs> yeah. And how would you describe uh, Professor Dugin? He is yes. a conservative too, you think? Yes, yes, yeah. he is uh, conservative, he is uh, orthodox Christian, he is very famous philosopher, worldwide philosopher, of course, and uh, he is founder of Russian contemporary mm. school of geopolitics. He is a uh, very influential and opinion maker in Russia, but not only in Russia. And what about, for example, Nikita Mikhalkov? Do you think, how would you describe him? Yes, uh, he is a famous school cultural activist and uh, movie maker, and uh, he is also influential. He is uh, more conservative, of course, than mm -hmm. li liberal. And one time he also, in his uh, program, Bisogon, mm -hmm. he quote, made a quotation uh, about my article about Soros. Uh -huh. uh, so, in some way, mm -hmm. we not met personally, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. he, he read my articles, yeah. at least. What about uh, famous Russian writer, Zakhar, Pil Zakhar Prilepin? Yes, he is conservative, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, he is yeah. uh, now doing uh, very good activity, uh, mm -hmm. just to uh, gather some cultural activists, artists, mm -hmm. and who promote Russian culture. And uh, what about Serb conservatives? Uh, who would you describe as a conservative in Serbian political scene? In politics, uh, it's very difficult because sometimes we think that uh, radical strong is conservative, but uh, then we see that they are not conservative. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
probably more mar marginal than co co mm. conservative. Mm. Social party also not conservative. <laughs> it's a very strange situation uh, for last elections process to parliament mm. uh, many political parties climb to, to each other who are more pro-Russian. Mm -hmm. So uh, everybody wants to get some kind of uh, benefit from pro-Russian label mm -hmm. in Serbia. But I think there must be some kind of fruits of activity if you're conservative uh, just to mm -hmm. show what you're doing. If uh, uh, some officials, uh, for, for example, some minister of Serbia to promote sodomite agenda and the LGBT so label, it's not conservative, it's strongly no. <laughs> anti-conservative. <laughs> and uh, if uh, some officials attack Serbian Orthodox Church, it's also mm. not, not conservative mm. agenda. It's, it's, if you ask me, somewhat similar to the situation in Pridnistrovia, I mean, there whenever the election is around, they are, all the politicians are pro-Russian in their, you know, speeches, in uh, their public... To, because it totally depends on yeah, Russia. Yeah. But then, but then the, when, they, when they win the elections, you know, then they become, you know, oligarchs and everything else, you know, but pro So it's possibly the situation here. But do you think that any of the politicians here is sincerely, genuinely pro-Russian? I think maybe uh, only some uh, pro-Russian. For example, uh, uh, I have a little bit sympathy to Ivica Dacic, for example. Because really? Santa, <laughs> yes, uh, because maybe uh, he's professional, at least. I don't know... Why, why do you want to, to, to spoil this relationship? We were, we were having a good interview. Why do you want to fight? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> really? Do you really tell me the name of uh, Serbian uh, politicians, for now. What? Who, who is more pro-Russian than Ivica, Ivica Dacic, for example. Well, in, I don't think our, that... Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that anyone is actually pro-Russian. You know, but, but from them, the most Russian is Ivica Dacic. Oh, from? Uh, from uh, well, mi Ivica, different ministries. Ivica Dacic is pro himself. Pro <laughs> That's himself? first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. So if it benefits him to act as a pro-Russian, he's going to do that. But, you know, uh, I mean, I wouldn't trust that guy. That's my mm -hmm. opinion, you know. But, okay, besides Ivica Dacic, do you see anybody else that appears pro-Russian to you? Yes, because uh, at least he tried to promote some kind of uh, yeah. but besides bil bilateral uh, relations. Yeah. Yes, it's a uh, kind of obligation uh, mm -hmm. of him. But if uh, maybe another minister uh, will be on this post, he will not do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is your personal opinion of Alexander Vucic? Why I ask you this? Not, uh, of course, if, if you don't want to get involved in Serbian politics, then you don't have to. But uh, uh, the reason is that many Vucic voters consider him to be heavily pro-Russian. Mm -hmm. uh, the state propaganda is often, on, not only state propaganda, you know, the, the media that are, you know, influenced by Vucic are always presenting him as heavily pro-Russian. But that is not the reality I saw in yes, Russia yes, or yes. actually he, here. At first, he's very active. He's kind of predator um, in politics. He's very active and uh, who will confront him? I not see such kind of person who will be very strong and to start a kind of activity against Vucic. Uh, so why... Here in Serbia? Uh, yes, here, here in Serbia. Uh, well, there are many anti Vucic activists, but none of them is actually very successful. That's, that's, the, that's one point. But, okay, there are maybe more sincerely pro-Russian uh, people among the anti Vucic activists, but mm -hmm. so far they don't have any practical influence, in, in, in any power in Serbia. But considering just Vucic's position, do you think that mm -hmm. he is pro-Russian in any way? You already said that he didn't fulfill many of the promises no, that he gave. I think he just tried to use Russia for uh, our own benefit. Uh, mm -hmm. Just uh, to get uh, some uh, military aircraft for free and mm -hmm. uh, just to get may maybe some kind, uh, I don't know, some donations from mm -hmm. Russia and so on. Yeah. Uh, and that's he, all he for show. Sure. Yes, yeah. some kind of uh, a pathetic mm -hmm. image when to yeah, speak yeah, about yeah. Uh, patriotism in Serbia and uh, Serbian-Russian relations. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm asking you is this. Uh, like half a year ago, year ago, Vucic and his cronies, they were all saying that if America gets uh, directly involved in negotiations about Kosovo, 
we are going to invite Russia on our side. Mm -hmm. uh, now that we know for a fact that America possibly still is, and at least until recently was involved heavily and directly in negotiations, do you think that Vucic will ever ask Russia for to to be in, to get involved in the process? You know, to not, help I'm Syria? not sure because uh, he uh, done many promises to Russia and uh, mm -hmm. personally to Vladimir Putin, for example, and uh, he not follow it on promises. So I know not not trust to Vucic, and I think that our president also not trust to Vucic anymore. You know, but when you say that. I mean, I don't think that mm -hmm. uh, pre Russian president actually trusts Vucic. But on the other hand, we saw that he invited Vucic to uh, the Victory Day. You know, the, 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 yes, the yes. big parade on the mm -hmm. May of 9th May. Uh, and uh, he was there with Netanyahu mm -hmm. and Vucic, you know, side by side. So uh, how do you explain that? Why did he invite him to that such such a big event? But uh, he not invited only Vucic and Netanyahu. Invitation was sent to many politicians, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, some not come. So it's reason that only some limited persons mm -hmm. was there uh, on this uh, uh, parade. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's the reason. So again, it's only Vucic uh, propaganda. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And. Uh, uh, w one of the key points in deciding what's going to be with Kosovo is, uh, of course, Russian possible veto in United mm -hmm. Nations. Uh, there is a theory that uh, Russians aren't ready to accept any solution, so-called solution for Kosovo, if it isn't uh, inside the boundaries of Serbian constitution and UN Resolution 1244. Uh, if that is the case, then Russia will most probably veto, you know, uh, uh, any, any uh, attempt to, uh, by, even by Serbia, to recognize Kosovo as an independent state. Do you think that that is likely the case? No. If uh, Serbia would like to recognize Kosovo, it will be, of course, uh, very hard choice for Russia. Because officially Russia uh, going to policy of non-interference. Mm -hmm. If it will be decision of Serbia, so why Russia must oppose this decision? No, of course, that is the logical question. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the other hand, when Maria Zaharova was here two, mm -hmm. two weeks ago in Belgrade, uh, she stated that, of course, at the end, Russia will support any solution that Serbia accepts. But she was like, the solution, she emphasized two or three times that solu that solution must be in accordance to Serbian constitution and UN resolution 1244. So, you know, yes. it's a contradictory statement because uh, Serbian government can actually, you know, theoretically accept some solution that is outside of the boundaries of Serbian constitution. But uh, it was clear message. Uh, mm -hmm. from Maria Zaharova, that uh, Russia is not interested to recognize Kosovo. So he uh, repeated it a few times. It's very clear. No so, matter what Serbia does. Uh, <laughs> if uh, Serbia will start to destroy our own constitution and mm -hmm. to start uh, uh, destroy international legislation, so maybe uh, Russia will be more free. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But uh, the problem is situation. Now, because we are, uh, all world is in kind of uh, transit period from bipolar world to unipolar world, and now it's some kind of emergent multipolar world, mm -hmm. but only emergent. So uh, many things will be changed. So questions in uh, what way uh, this, this things will be changed and mm -hmm. how to change it. And uh, what that means, yeah, yeah. economically, politically, military, mm -hmm. mixed, um, hybrid, I, I don't mm -hmm. know. So it's uh, complicated questions. And what do you expect? I mean, would you advise Serbia to uh, accept or make or create a solution as soon as possible? Or would you advise Serbia to wait a little longer? No, I think uh, Serbia must to wait at first mm -hmm. and uh, Serbia must to invite uh, more Russian presence here mm -hmm. and uh, to be ready to get Kosovo back. Mm -hmm. There will be a good situation. Because uh, five years ago, nobody in Russia thinks that uh, Crimea will be Russian. Mm -hmm. 
It was just a situation and, uh, created by some Ukrainian groups and uh, radical groups. Mm -hmm. uh, they have own, own, very own idea and uh, with background of uh, United States mm -hmm. and the West, but uh, Russia done very own decision also. So uh, I think Serbians must be ready. Maybe not also Serbians, maybe uh, some uh, your colleagues from Macedonia and mm -hmm. uh, from other countries to take yeah. Kosovo back. Maybe to start mm -hmm. kind of reintegration of region. Why not? In geopolitics, it's not that it's some kind of process every time. Well, I would, <laughs> I wouldn't be so much in favor for any I integration here. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in the past it was very troubling for us. But uh, let me ask you this: uh, What about when you say Russian presence? Uh, you know, Western lobbies always accuse Russia of influencing Serbia, of meddling in Serbia. Do you think that that's the true? That that's true. Do you think that's the case? No, maybe uh, five percent of what, uh, <laughs> what they you say. read in the Western media is true about Russia, mm -hmm. because uh, I some uh, sometimes read uh, some strange information about myself in uh, Voice of America on Balkans and some kind of media that I am uh, some kind of. Uh, one of strateg strategists of uh, Kremlin expansion of Balkans, so <laughs> about me. So <laughs> but it's a, it's a very serious tone that they try to accuse Russians anything what happens in a negative way they, in Balkans, not mm. only in Serbia, in Montenegro, in Macedonia, in uh, mm. Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Croatia. And, uh, and also in, in Germany, and, we and tried, America, of try course. to influence yeah. the election process, and France, yeah. and the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the, uh, I mean, one of the, the things that Serbs are most confused by is Sputnik. Uh, Sputnik in Serbia is, I don't know how to put it differently, but it is very pro uh, They are uh, often reporting in favor of Vucic, you know, and many here consider that that is the official stance of the Russian government or Russia as a state, you know, because Putnik is, of course, uh, government sponsored, you know, Kremlin sponsored. Do you think that is the case? Do you think that Putnik is necessarily the uh, mouthpiece of Kremlin government? No, no, it's uh, at first it's separated from uh, decision making process. And in Russia, it's uh, some kind of mixed politics uh, to provide mixed politics, liberal, conservative. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I know some persons who worked in, in uh, Russian office of Sputnik, and uh, so they are disappointed because it's mostly a uh, pro-Western point of view mm -hmm. in many news. And if you we will check, uh, for example, websites of Sputnik in uh, Tajikistan and Sputnik mm -hmm. in Turkey, we will see the same. They are mostly mm -hmm. uh, just... Uh, say good uh, words about uh, domestic politics, uh -huh. about local uh, politicians, about own presidents, it's uh, normal. So actually, uh, uh, Putin's government is not very authoritarian as... as no, as no, it's... Uh, our media is very free in Russia. We have many liberal newspapers, websites and mm -hmm. TV channels and who openly critics Putin and uh, most, mostly reprint uh, news from United States, some uh, mm -hmm. fake news. Exactly, but, yes. <laughs> and uh, would you describe yourself as pro-Putin or against Putin or uh, how no. would you position yourself? If, uh, to speak only about Putin, mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, pro-Putin when he is doing uh, right things <laughs> in Russia and outside of mm -hmm. Russia. And we start critics when he is doing mm -hmm. pro wrong things. So. Mm -hmm. We are not uh, just fans of Putin's. Mm -hmm. It's normal for democracy. Yeah, I know that, for <laughs> example, Zakhar Prilepin was, uh, like 10 years ago, he was even organizing protests against Putin in his hometown, you know. But now he's mostly considered as a pro-Putin activist, you know. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. probably the case with you, right? <laughs> yes, and uh, also Putin uh, changed some, uh, some politics for in uh, domestic issues in Russia. and. Uh, Mm -hmm. So it's reasons why some persons should start to support him. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that lack of authority, uh, uh, do you think that Russia is uh, weaker or stronger than under communist rule? 
And the communist rule, there was Soviet Union. So yeah, yeah. it was, uh, it was kind of interdependence mm-hmm. between republics. It was uh, interdependence of committees of communist parties. There was Politburo. Uh, from other hand, uh, Russia is weaker because uh, apparatus is not so strong like it was during the Soviet times period. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, for example, I don't understand what now doing our external intelligence because there are no political orders. They, yes, there is a structure, the people working there, mm-hmm. they mostly some. Some working with uh, our diplomats together in embassies, and uh, but uh, there are no orders, there are no mm. ideology itself in mm. Russia, because by Russian constitution is prohibited to have one ideology. So, really? Yes. In Russian uh, constitution. Yes, Russian constitution was written during Yeltsin period, and uh, American experts, yes. uh, American lawyers from Carnegie Foundation, uh, you can to go. But, uh, to read on the website of Carnegie Foundation, <laughs> there is very clear that uh, yes, our American experts uh, assisted to write Russian constitution. And still there are some points uh, uh-huh. that prevent to do very good things. So for kind of, uh, prohibited to have ideology and uh, something like that. <laughs> why, why don't you change that? I don't know. And, uh, many uh, people in Russia, there is some kind of movement uh, try to influence and uh, send leaders, petitions. To Putin to change this point of constitution, but till now it's not changed. Mm. And what do you think about the image of Russia in the world? I mean, we know that in the West it's very bad. You know, everybody considers Russia to be an enemy. But what about the rest of the world? What about China? How do they, you know, uh, see Russia in China or in India or in Pakistan? You've been to Pakistan, yes, right? yes. Uh, of course, uh, China is also emergent power, and uh, they're mm-hmm. interested to uh, keep good relations with uh, Russia. At first, uh, uh, China look on Russia like uh, some kind of uh, back, because mm-hmm. if China will confront with West, uh, uh, I don't know many reasons. Partly Iceland of uh, Taiwan, for example. Mm-hmm to start war with United States, they need to do a good back. And Russia mm-hmm. is uh, geographically and politically mm-hmm. can to provide uh, China resources, and oil, gas, and so on. Mm-hmm. And uh, in Pakistan, yes, it's, uh, it was uh, pro-American for decades, mm-hmm. and now it's changed politics, and it's, uh, of course, pro-Chinese, and uh, China used Pakistan like a proxy mm-hmm. to, contact, uh, to contact Muslim countries. And uh, Pakistan also uh, become pro-Russian. And mm-hmm. uh, we started a good uh, relation in many fields, and military, and politics, and economics. And uh, during the last two years, we organized many joint commissions, mm-hmm. uh, meetings. And uh, I am uh, very happy that it started, mm-hmm. because uh, Pakistan is uh, very important uh, for geopolitics of Eurasia. Mm-hmm. It's also nuclear uh, power, power yeah. yes. and. Uh, and uh, this population is uh, rising in Pakistan, middle class is rising, economic rising, not like in India, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, India more uh, pro-American and uh, mm-hmm. not, uh, uh, so we are not so, so satisfied with uh, Russian-Indian relations. In Iran, uh, but in, in Iran we see uh, two kinds of groups. Mm-hmm. One, uh, Iranian patriotic radicals are also Sometimes anti-Russian, uh, mm-hmm. because maybe uh, uh, Soviet history, and uh, but uh, moderate uh, patriots are also pro-Russian, mm. because we started uh, many projects. Russia support Iran in economics and development and uh, so on. And of course, we kind of balance uh, for Iran uh, in the struggle mm-hmm. of Iran and the West. Yeah. And, uh, of course, in Syria, our image is very good, mm. yeah, because we save this country. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Syria is a Muslim country, Iran too, uh, Pakistan too. You know, uh, how do you manage to uh, turn Muslim countries from enemies into your allies? I mean, you, you did that with the Chechens too, right, mm. in Dagestan. I mean, we, 
we we can't seem to be able to do that here in Serbia with our Muslims. You know, I mean, how how do you how, how do you accomplish that in Russia? Yes. Many people forget that uh, Russia also kind of Muslim country. For example, during the time of uh, Ekaterina II, uh, first printed Quran was printed in Kazan city uh -huh. in the world. Uh, so uh, in uh, some regions uh, there was uh, traditionally Muslim populations in Caucasus and uh, Volga regions and so on. Uh, at second, uh, there are no uh, kind of general uh, Muslim uh, point of view. In Iran there is Shia Muslim, in Pakistan Sunni Muslim but uh, followers of Sufi orders mm -hmm. mostly. In Syria mixed. The Sunni, the Shia, Alawites, uh, the political uh, uh, groups yeah. who in power, for example, Assad, the Alawites, uh, they're close to Shia Muslim, but they also Druze, they also Christians. So Syria it's more a complex uh, issue yeah. if we speak about uh, Muslim populations. Yeah. So it wouldn't be impossible, let's say, if. Uh, Serbia in the future establishes some kind of military cooperation with Russia and Russian troops come to Kosovo. It wouldn't be surprising if Kosovo Albanians turn to our allies, right? Instead of our enemies, <laughs> under Russia's guide. Do you think that it, it wouldn't be impossible, but right? May, maybe 20 years ago it was kind of uh, some uh, no, not possible just to do, mm. but uh, maybe in the next 10 years it will be a normal situation. Yeah. Because we are presented in Syria, we have experienced it about uh, mm -hmm. foreign military presence. Because, because also relations with Turkey is different than the 20 years ago. Uh, Turkey is important actors also in Balkans, influential in uh, Albania, in uh, Kosovo region. Mm -hmm. In general, between uh, Balkan Muslims. And uh, Turkey now also anti-American. That is very important, mm. and we will try to keep the strength uh, more, <laughs> more strong. Uh, Turkey depends on Russia in many mm. uh, aspects and economics and uh, gas supplies, and uh, we build atomic uh, nuclear plants mm. in Turkey. We will provide uh, weapon systems mm. to Turkey. So why not? And uh, also maybe next step will be providing. Uh, advanced military weapons to Serbia, mm -hmm. just, just to protect yeah. our space. God bless. And um, why do you think that, it's one of the last questions actually, why do you think that Russians are so fascinated with the West? Some Russians, you know. But why do you think that Russians are always open to the West? Even the West uh, keeps showing its ugly face to Russia all the time. I mean, even during the World Cup, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you could see that Russians were delighted that finally the West accepted us. No, they didn't accept you. <laughs> they, they were just, you know, okay, that uh, you were the host of the World Cup, but that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, why are Russians always so trusting in, 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 in the West's good intentions? Uh, it's the question of uh, inclusiveness and exclusiveness. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the Western world, uh, if you will see uh, different countries, nation states, it's kind, kind of exclusiveness, started from uh, epoch of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. There was idea of uh, nation states and the idea of sovereignty, for example, was born in the West. In Russia, there was another history, because Russia started like empire because of inclusiveness. We enlarge it, we take uh, different ethnic groups uh, inside our geopolitical body. And till now we feel the same inclusiveness. For example, any person from Latin America, from Western Europe, from even from Africa can come to Russia and to become Russian. Uh, for example, some Negros, uh, if uh, he will speak uh, Russian, uh, he will identify itself like Russian and uh, he will be a Russian Negro. Why not? So uh, I know personally many foreigners who become Russian. Mm -hmm. And uh, he like Russian countries, so it's I think the most important reason. Another point of view on the uh, world itself: we try to be and to keep an in inclusiveness, not to be exclusive. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, uh, as Russia grows stronger, uh, the West keeps 
fearing the Russia more and more. You know, they are more and more scared of Russia and they see Russia as always bigger and bigger threat. And uh, what do you think will happen if Russia continues to grow strong? Is Russia growing strong, actually? Is Russia now stronger than 10 or 20 years ago? Yes, I think it will be the same fear like uh, centuries ago. Uh, Nikolai Danilevsky told uh, very clear about uh, just look on the map. What is Europe and what is Russia? <laughs> Russia is very massive and Europe is just a small mm. peninsula of Eurasia. <laughs> so maybe uh, they are afraid of this mm. kind of uh, just uh, visionary outlook yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for next 10-20 uh, years of course if uh, Russia will grow maybe this kind of fears will continue yeah. but uh, uh, Russia open to cooperation and uh, we told to our European partners uh, what, what, why are you following the orders from United States for example yeah. just uh, stop sanctions yeah. we are ready to cooperation we are uh, not uh, want to invade your countries. Mm. It is some kind of stupidity. We uh, have a huge territory to develop, and why we not uh, to uh, start tank attacks to Berlin, for example, or to Paris? It's a mm. very, very strange idea, uh, even to Baltic countries. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Uh, if uh, you will read uh, news or magazines of uh, some political mil military. Uh, establishment from Western countries, especially uh, yeah. affiliated uh, with uh, NATO, you will see that there is propaganda about that. Russia will start war very soon in Baltic area. Russia will start war in Moldova very soon. Yeah. Russia will start war in the Balkans and so on. Yeah. It's uh, some kind of fake propaganda. Yeah. Russia is not, not interested <laughs> to start any war. Yeah. We have uh, many domestic problems. We have uh, need to resolve these problems and uh, uh, we can to assist uh, to resolve pro problem like uh, in Syria for example just to keep some kind of uh, uh, buffer zone mm -hmm. uh, neutral buffer zone free and safe so it's our idea and Balkans sent us as this kind of buffer zone we would like uh, that there will be peace on Balkans too mm -hmm. But uh, I'm afraid that uh, some Western partners mm. would like to do conflict. Yeah, the opposite. And since you mentioned sanctions, uh, how effective those sanctions are? Is Russian economy suffering? Is uh, Russian state suffering? Is Russian society yes, suffering? Yes, in some sectors we uh, totally depend on uh, the West. For example, pharmacology and some kind mm -hmm. of microelectronics. But step by step, we are developing our own products. Maybe next five years we will see and we will have more, we will have more of Turkey from the West. It will be very good. Like well, in agricultural sector, mm -hmm. before we dependent of uh, yeah. some supplies from West, now not, and uh, it's good. I mean, in all my travelings to Russia, I never met a person who was actually speaking even about sanctions you know it's like that it, it concerns nobody nobody's bothered by it is that correct impression or yes uh, personally it's not impact so much uh, it's uh, will impact uh, for example if we if will be inflation uh, mm -hmm. process so everybody will think because it will be the difference with salary mm -hmm. uh, with uh, services uh, with the prices and so but that didn't and, happen right yes and for till now yes uh, mm. russian government tried to keep keep a balance at least uh, uh, for now it's more or less okay mm. and last question how important really serbia is for russians so, because here many people think that serbia is not very important either to the west or to the russians what would you say to that? I remember uh, every time uh, that uh, Serbia is small Russia. So how important will be uh, uh, our small part for, for Russia? It's uh, maybe not so big importance like uh, Kaliningrad and Club, mm -hmm. for example, but because it's constitu constitutionally mm -hmm. Russian territory. Uh, but for my opinion, yes, uh, Serbia is very important, important. Uh, point of view of Serbian people, what happens in Russia, uh, important uh, our 
uh, historical relations and of course very important what happens in Serbia in the next five or ten years and uh, yeah, very important what Serbia uh, will choose Russia or European Union for example if they will be, uh, just uh, this or this question is it important for the Russian society as well or only and, for you personally and uh, yes so in uh, Russian society yes too because uh, Russian society uh, most of people remember in the uh, war in Yugoslavia mm -hmm. and uh, NATO bombardment and uh, mm -hmm. uh, interest in what happens in Serbia now. And I think for many Russian politi uh, politicians, Serbia is also important. Thank you very much. Очень спасибо за это интервью. Я надеюсь, что вы будете нам гост еще еще одной раз. Благодарю, Вера. Да, был рад посетить и, конечно, в следующие визиты всегда готов. Очень спасибо. Побеседовать. Извините, что мой русский очень плохой, но английский послужил. Спасибо еще раз. Было интервью с господином Леонидом Савином, геополитическим стратегом и познавателем из Москвы. Он был на миссии «Расправда» у сродни канала «Хелмкаст» и портала «Правда». Видимо, с полного за несколько дней. До свидания и приятно.